live. All right. Cool. I think we're live. Before we get started taking some questions, I'm going to give you guys a, like a table of contents for this live stream in case we leave it up. Primarily, we want to take some questions for the man. And if there's something for me, I'll take a swing at it. But I'm going to read the comments and the questions and then try to move them up there. Don't be afraid to put your question up a few times because things can move kind of quick. And if I don't catch it, um, just put it again. And if there's problems with the audio, like it's too soft or just not quite right, please let me know because I think I can adjust it and, and correct it while we're going. But it's difficult to know. It's difficult for me to know if that's how it's coming out on yeah, your th side. This is, of all the things we've been doing on social media, this is the one where our experience is the weakest. So we're practicing on you again, right? Yeah, and we keep saying that, okay, we're practicing, and now we're ready to do this regular. So I think we're going to stop saying that. Yeah. <laughs> because what, This is our fourth time or fifth time? Yeah, and it's just, for some reason, we can't seem to stick with it. And it always feels like the first time when we do it, but that's what practice is for. That's right. So at the end of the live stream or towards the end, I'm going to ask you guys a question kind of um, regarding the podcast and, and just get some feedback. And if after this live stream is done, I'll put a, a description tag so you can click right to it. But so stay tuned for that if you can. And if you got some questions for us, for my dad in the meantime, um, now's your chance to put them up. You've been putting in framing and lumber all morning, so you're probably feeling like it's the end of a work day, but hopefully you got... Yeah, I didn't, some energy. Work, didn't work too hard. Just put in a bunch of fire blocks and, yeah. and uh, some of that. You know, there's one thing I can speak to. The, the video that we just put up about the expensive choices, the, the shot was framed where right over my shoulder you could kind of sight down the, the uh, eave line at the overhang on the backside of the garage. And as it turns out, the drip edge on that side has just a little bit of a bow. So on the on the end closest to the camera the drip edge roofers somehow got it on there about like five eighths of an inch out away from the substrate and then gradually it went back up to where it needed to be and so that created a bow in the first two rows of roofing oh. created the optical illusion of a drooping corner on that bar drafter oh. and the first time i walked back there to look at that perspective yeah. i just about passed out i thought really those barred rafters are sagging and so i got up there and i stretched the string down the rafter tails and they're nice and straight but they look yeah good. so well that might take uh, some more attention to explain that on the yeah, main channel we've had lots of lots of guys said hey man is that bar <laughs> dropping off there already or what all right well we got some questions so um <laughs> nice hi everybody hi every uh thanks you are here chiming in let me start at the top and come down from martin are we going to see a video on the cigar smoking guy Oh, yes, Martin. Um, Ken Jordan. Pipe smoking guy. Pipe, yeah, pipe smoking guy. That, in fact, that, that is in the queue, and Nate has sort of handed over to me to develop the sort of the, the story there because he is a close friend of mine who's had a big impact on me and has accomplished some, thing, some things in craftsmanship well, technical on, difficulties. On, okay, I, I think we're back. Sorry, there's probably going to be some of that because this computer is a little old. All right, next question. David, is the house finished? And we are just waiting on the video to complete? Great question. The answer is no, no, no. It's not finished. Phil the plumber is in there roughing in waste and vent. Out ex siding, as you know, is on. Exterior doors and windows are in. And we are just sort of diving into the inside. It's gone slow. We have intentionally backed down the pace to keep some other things moving forward. And we're not rushing this. We're doing it once and we're doing it right. And so... We are, um, no, it's not done. We don't even know when to tell you the open house is coming, but it will come. Yeah. All right. Joseph Hernandez. Great to see you guys. Out of all the places you've worked, are you satisfied with where you are at now? Great question, Joseph. I, uh, looking back, I, I wish I would have stayed in Wyoming almost just because Wyoming was spectacular. Las Vegas was a good education and a pretty tough place to live. And it's good to be back home in Oregon in a lot of ways. So I guess the short answer is we've all, we've just got to decide to be satisfied where we're at, and I have nothing at all to complain about. Yeah. All right, Palmer Monson. What tools are best not to skimp on when starting a collection of tools? Uh, Palmer, we did a podcast on that very question a week ago that'll probably roll out soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess I don't know if we hit that exactly. Which ones are best to not skimp on? The rule of thumb is always buy the best tool you can possibly afford. Sometimes that means you buy junk. Sometimes it means you buy the best there is. Yeah. 
Uh, what do you feel about DeWalt tools? I don't know much about DeWalt. Yellow's not my favorite color. Yeah, that's about all there is. They they're great. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of guys yeah. I I respect like crazy. Swear by them. Sam Mullen, what's your favorite part about construction? Being able to look back at the end of the day and see what you've accomplished. Uh, RMC eight fifteen. What will be your asking price for the house? I oh, think. that 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 is uh, don't know. That don't is up know. to the market. Yeah, and Nate Nate's going to be determining that. He's got big real estate experience, so we don't know. I, I don't know honestly. I think we're going to kind of just put it up there maybe for like a couple month period and just see what kind of offers come. I, I don't know. It, it'll, it'll be market value, which in that neighborhood's not going to be more than, I don't even want to say, I, I don't know. Yeah, we don't Good know. Good question. All right. Um, all right, Douglas, uh, my kids want you and Nate to build them a play, a play set. Please consider doing a video on building some basic kids play sets, swings, small forts, for those of us that need help, love the show. Thanks, Douglas. That's a great idea. My boy Clayton, about a year ago, found a used playset that somebody sold sold him on Craigslist for fifty bucks because they were moving. He tore it down, brought it over to the house, set it up. We, our kids love it. And the next thing we're going to build is a treehouse. So we'll do that. The tree, the the play equipment. But great suggestion. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, you're good. Go okay, ahead. yeah, we're going to use mini split systems. Uh, ductless systems, but there are there will be about four separate zones. The downstairs is one entire zone um, with a with a non typical ductless installation, and then the different areas up, upstairs will have their own mini split systems. General question from E one thousand SN about personal work philosophy. After you get past A depends on B type tasks, how do you prioritize work? Good question. I don't know. I, you know, for most of my life, A has always depended on B. And yeah. for a lot of my life, it was it was how to generate the cash flow. And that's always been the first priority. So, you know, as soon as I spend a period of time where A doesn't depend on B, I'll try to cycle back to that question. Good question. <laughs> yeah. All right. From Wynn Patterson, it's taken me years to learn to put my tools away in the shop. How often oh. do you find it necessary to stop, put away, and clean your shop? Not very often. <laughs> I'll answer that for him. So apparently I haven't had enough years yet to learn that lesson. Yeah. All right. For Scott, how would you go about finding a good framing crew? Or oh. What types of qualities do you look for in a framing crew? Thanks, Jordan. Man, you know, I... I don't know because I've never had to do that because I've always done my own framing. But I'll tell you that leading up to the framing on the house, it was a problem how to find a guy, one or two qualified guys in a market where skilled labor is in high demand was hard. But like everything else, I would just go around and talk to the people they've worked for and look at the work they've done most recently and make my best judgment. All right. I think we got people still asking about your mic, so maybe point it a little more like right towards the camera. Or, I, I'm not sure if that'll help. I'm okay. maxed out on the mic level, guys, so... Is this any better? That that will probably Let's be Let's try that better. All right. Uh, from Kurt. And again, if I skip questions, guys, I'm really sorry. It's it's not as easy as you might think to keep track of these. Not that, not that that's too crazy, but I'm See making, how he makes excuses, I'm excuses all excuses the time. I'm making excuses for yeah. myself. All right. Uh, I would love, from Dimensional Craftsman, I'd love to the opportunity to work alongside you with the interior finish or really anything that needs help to get the house wrapped up. Um, Okay, that's his question, I guess. It would be cool. It, it's hard to you know. You know, it, it's been, it's been kind of heartbreaking. I've had all these qualified guys say, man, can I come help? Can I come help? But lining up schedules and, and the whole thing about reliability and when to get here and how to get here, it hasn't worked out so far. I've had some stunningly generous offers, and mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much for offering that, but I don't see how we can do it. Uh, from Kurt. Scott and Nate, longtime subscriber. Thanks, Kurt. Curious, has the rioting and looting and protesting affected you with the build? Uh, zero. We, I mean, we are lucky to be in a small town. We are 180 miles south of Portland, but I'll tell you how it's affecting me, boys. It's breaking my heart. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you recorded the, let's see. Okay. Boyd, when you recorded the live stream in different locations, what software did you use? This same software is called Ecamm, and I'm only using one camera at this time, but there's, if you plug in more, you can toggle between them. Uh, all right, I'm going to kind of roll forward. Um, okay, uh, for Martin again, what places do you like to visit for leisure? Have you visited Europe? Wow, Martin, great question. Kelly and I were scheduled to go for the first time to Europe in about three weeks. We've got dear family friends in Germany. There was a 10th wedding anniversary going to be celebrated. Monica and Johannes' wedding anniversary was going to be is going to be celebrated. They are like, like my children and we were going, and the 
tickets were purchased, and then we were going to to um, Great Britain to visit some friends there and do a meet and greet around Sheffield, and it was lining up to be such a wonderful experience, and sorry it's off the table for this year, but we'll cycle back around. Great question. Thanks. Uh, from Big Sweaty, what would your advice be on how to land big jobs when you're just starting your own business? Oh, man. My advice is be careful about big jobs. Be careful about big jobs because that that carrot of a big a big profit margin at the end, one big job goes bad and you're starting out, you're done. You're back on somebody else's payroll. And so I would, I would be cautious about swinging for the fence until you get a little bit of a batting record. There's something to be said for like one foot in front of the other, yeah. you know, do a big job and then maybe a little bigger and a little bigger. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure like everything you work your way to it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a business is, is most at risk during periods of rapid growth. Okay. Rapid growth is really hard to support in construction. Yeah. All right. Um, Gamer Byte is asking how the political and pandemic climate affects the build process. We kind of answered that. Not really much, actually. We're essential work. It's construction. We're essential work. And we're and always like sp- spread apart, and we are taking it serious. And as far as the political stuff, I mean, what what can you do? So we're just trying to just go about our business and yeah, I don't know, not not stress. Well, we're stressing, <laughs> yeah. but it's but it's not altering. We're trying the, to keep the build. There you go. All right. Um, from Steve, have you guys ever thought about doing a day in the life of both of your lives, just a glimpse into your daily routine or something along those lines? Let me jump in because, uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to making a video about that, more about your life because you have a very uh, predictable routine in the morning, going, getting to the job site where you eat, the sequence of loading, getting the truck out the door, and I think it would be pretty fun to kind of film that whole process. So, yeah, Steve, I can't wait to make that video someday. I don't know when, but... You any thoughts? And yeah, day in the life for Nate is edit, 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 cut, 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 film, 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 help the kids, help the kids, help the kids, edit, 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 cut, 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 film, 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 help yeah. the kids. That's pretty much it. And a lot more screaming in between the cracks. A lot of screaming, of yeah, yeah. All right, what was the story with the chicken in the cage on the tool tank in last week's video from David? <laughs> um, well, the that rooster came from one of those ciders, and we're finishing a video kind of about this little chicken, what is it, a... Not a school of chickens. What are they? A flock. There you go. Chickens are flocks. Uh, and so there's a flock now with the with the top dog. And yeah, so, so we'll tell more about that guy. So Kenny and Nate, two of the ciders, um, live on sort of a family ranch over by Elkton, which is a cool little community nearby. And the rooster that we got was sort of the junior rooster over there at their place. And the big rooster was making his life miserable. So it only took them two hours to catch that rooster. <laughs> We've named him Elkton. They brought him to the job, and I took him home. Yeah, he's really a beautiful rooster. I, I I don't haven't seen a lot, but I just was admiring him. He's like yeah. deep green, and they got such a long like neck. There, you don't realize it until yeah. you kind of look through the feathers. But he's all neck and head. Yeah, he's neck and head. Yeah. and his spurs are about three quarters of an inch long. And I think I'm going to introduce them to a four inch angle grinder one of these days. And he doesn't seem to be an aggressive or mean or like bad rooster. He seems no. pretty pretty cool. Yeah, doesn't like people. All right. Um, kind of skip ahead here and then we're going to give you guys um our question for you uh, from dylan have you had a chance to look at the perkin brothers channel and how they edit and produce content uh yeah i i love those guys i love everything about their videos i was heartbroken and shocked about the accident and and also inspired at his continued you know chin up and i i got nothing but like good things to say about their videos also they're so they're clean and easy and, and they make it look easy so i'm yeah. a fan I, I haven't i i i don't watch much youtube anymore except yeah. editing and reviewing drafts and stuff but yeah. but i was impressed at the one brother's concern and love for the brother that got hurt and then they're back at it and it, it's yeah. a giant they're, salute they're building a house also or are they good yeah i think it might be for a client i'm not sure and i don't know how far past the framing they're going to stick with the job but it's great and i i i i'm cheering them on all right um, I gotta read these as we go here. Uh, okay, here's a guy. Here's Dimensional saying, "FYI, Scott Carhartt double front dungarees are on Amazon. He just bought two from really? a local store, so maybe they're still w- out there." With the bachelor buttons for the suspenders, I mean, because they've made a they've made a an analog that that does not include this feature. So, circle back and let me know if it's got the buttons on there. Uh, from Lewis, will there be a follow-up interview with Scott present with Larry Hahn's family? Thank you. Uh, yeah, we don't know exactly what that'll be like yet, but 
they were such neat people and and we haven't spelled it out exactly, but yeah, we're hoping so. We're hoping to. I would love to visit with Joe. Joe's still on yeah, deck and he's actually, ninety, right? Yeah, and uh I think that I think that's doable. So maybe yeah. maybe that's how we do it. Yeah, that would be good. I wonder if he's in Coos Bay also. In fact, thank you for the bringing that up because let's 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 do that. All yeah. right, good uh good feedback there. All right. Um and if you got any, got any questions, now's your chance. We're probably going to go for 10 or 12 more minutes, is it? All right, here's one from B. Boyd. If you were to start a business, would you add one person at a time to payroll, or would you add an entire crew, say an entire roofing crew or an entire drew? So that, so payroll. Um, but I think that would depend almost entirely on the size of the market that I was in and the confidence I had that I had enough of a reputation or enough marketing savvy to be able to tie up enough work to keep guys busy. For me, it was daunting to think about taking responsibility for the paychecks that were going into other families' budgets. And so it kind of scared me out of that a little bit. So to answer your question, I probably would add one at a time because the only thing worse than at adding one unqualified or careless or, or dishonest employee would be to add four or five at once. And the likelihood of getting four or five top hands at once is low. So I would, I would probably move slowly. Uh, from Kurt Taft, Scott, what do you recommend for advertising for a new construction business? I know word of mouth is usually best. What else works for you? It's all I ever used. All I ever used was word of mouth. Um, one thing in a, in, in a small community, I have learned that if you donate and participate in, in public, like in school fundraisers and buying 4-H lambs and that sort of thing, you get a lot of good press. Uh, among people that are probably at about your social strata, but but the the best advertising there is is to always exceed your clients' expectations. Yeah, I've I've hired a lot of workers off Craigslist and, mm-hmm. and Craigslist ads. So Nate's had good luck. That's with usually that. the first place I go, and I don't know what makes a good ad, but I don't think it costs much, if anything, to do that. Very so little. That that's kind of like low hanging fruit. Um. Autonomous Maximus, how's the storage business treating you? Any issues or updates? It's it's treating me really well, and there aren't really any issues or updates. I would like to go back down there and, and build out one of those containers into an office or at least an air-conditioned space for the computer and cameras. So hopefully someday we can have an update that involves that. But at the moment, there's there's not much else to say. It's full of tenants, and guys are storing their equipment, and, and it's really terrific, and I got a great manager who's taking care of that business for me so i can focus on this all right a few more here uh taco trd what is it about forging knives it seems like those who forge a knife are borderline obsessive <laughs> i love ah! the channel <laughs> yeah man you nailed it you nailed it there is a sort of a <laughs> cult attraction to forging knives it's not borderline it's yeah you're full on full on knife makers are obsessive except for sai though sai so, so take it's, it's just one piece of sai's production routine yeah. right and i was talking to him this morning frankly and he's gotten a lot of knife orders and i can hear him kind of reeling just a little bit but but his system is is uh, good and he's he's happy with what he's doing but a lot of guys start making knives because of the romance and the romance just intensifies and i don't know if there's ever a breakup yeah <laughs> um one thing about knives it's I guess this is the same with all social media, but it's tough to get started making anything these days when you have Instagram and all these other social platforms where you're instantly comparing your beginner knife to Mm -hmm. what is these obsessive works of art, you know, Mm -hmm. like look like they came out of a a machine. And so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that, maybe it's kind of that. Maybe people are getting more obsessive as the standards of expectations rise could, could or something be. like that but i'll tell you what if you want to be humbled sometimes go to a museum and look at some of the swords and things that came out of the middle ages you know and out of indonesia and stuff and yeah i guess it's always been that way okay um, we're gonna do maybe two or three more and then we'll give you our question for you i work and go to some jordan bickmore i work and go to school ec when did you figure out and how did you figure out how to balance time balancing family work and life i.e. my nine and eight year old boys okay okay we're back okay first, jordan i did i talk to you on the phone one time i'm not sure um but but that is such an important question and i i so so religion and family and work and and uh, community are all important things and you never make the mistake of thinking that any one of them trumps all the time you have to be you have to be 
fast enough on your feet and objective enough or have a wife that's objective enough to be able to take counsel when your emphasis is too much on one thing. In fact, that's the best. There's the best answer. Give it the wife test. And if you are as fortunate as I am in the wife that you have, she will help you um, see clearly when you're when you are out of balance in one direction or the other. But you never before you die, you never find yourself saying, I wish I would have spent more time at the office. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not a black and white thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I take comfort sometimes seeing a older generation who has older kids and I can do the math and be like, Hey, so you were building that business when your kids were that mm-hmm. age and just kind of realizing that that's something that probably every father who ever lived had to balance for themselves. And, and most of them found a way to do uh, it. Although so. some of them ignored it. Yeah. Some of them ignored it, and then they've got the rest of their life to be sorry for that. But so, if you're thinking about it and yep. asking the question, yep. you're on the right side of the line, it seems That's like. That's right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, everybody, for the questions. Um, I'll Let's do a couple more. All aboard Gamer, do you run into a lot of white-collar workers who are desiring to transition to blue-collar work? This is a good yeah, question. Yeah. Do you want, just wondering if you see this bridge being crossed since you're in the public eye. Great question. What, what do you say to that? I don't see it well. I hear a lot of people express, expressing that ache, that I really want to be working with my hands. And I think what they're really, really saying is, I really want to be able to see at the end of the day what I did with my time. But I don't, I get some feedback from people who made the leap. And so far, the feedback's been positive. But sometimes in conversations with people, I point out that your kids don't care if you're satisfied with your work, they don't care. If you feel frustrated at your white collar job, they want stability. They need stability. They need they need what they need. But there's always a way to get a blue collar outlet or a handcraft, a craftsmanship outlet on a hobby basis first before you jump into the deep end and make a choice that you might spend a long time being sorry for when your paycheck's cut in half. So be yeah. careful with that seduction. Yeah, there's a grass is greener component yeah. because there's a lot of office guys who would love to be out feeling the sun on their backs and there's a lot of guys with the sun on their backs who would do anything to sit in a chair and have some ac what he said yeah all right uh, that was jordan bickmore you spoke to about yeah kids, jordan so. attaboy um robert would you make a follow-up to your how to be efficient clip with more tips and tricks i, I i'm i'm gonna assume it's probably wrong but he's talking about the skill saw video Although maybe oh. he's talking about the productive video. Oh, maybe, maybe the tips and tricks for being productive. But I'm going to hijack that question and say we do want to make an update to the Skillsoft Pro Tips video, which is our most uh, watched video and, and probably the one that just came together the best. And mm-hmm. there's actually a, kind of a lot more to say there. So we're going to update that one. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, but I, I'll tell you, I, I picked all the low-hanging fruit, and I'm going to have to think a little more carefully about it efficiency and effectiveness and productivity before we start cranking out another video because it's important that there's something to say rather than just film to burn yeah but i wouldn't mind making that video even just pointing people back to that one mm. and re-highlighting some of the basics because that we made at the same time we filmed that we filmed the basics of skill saws and that video like didn't get any views and so i've always kind of been concerned that a lot of people go straight to that one oh. Yeah. Without like properly sort of, so a- anyways, <laughs> yeah. and I think there is one tip that didn't make it in there surprisingly, and it's probably the most effective skill saw tip, at least from not a pro, but just the, the fact of turning the lumber up on its edge and letting gravity p- pull the pull saw through. down yeah, instead of shoving that. it through. Yeah. It's second nature for and, you. And we'll but, be talking about that when we review that cordless yeah, skill exactly. too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> Last one. How do we find out when the... Live chats will air. <laughs> Sorry, man. I see you, Daniel. I don't know. I, wh- it's, I don't know. We so, so we're not real organized. I mean, he's more organized yeah. than I am. And a, a lot of this, in case, in case you can't tell, is flying by the seat of our pants. So we'll try to do better. We'll yeah. try to do better. Yeah. All right. So our question for you viewers, and if you put a couple questions up, we'll take a couple at the end. But this, plat- this um, second channel that we've been using now for a few months. Actually, no, it's been a year or so. It's been a year. And um, at the time, the, the mindset was we didn't want to put this different type of content on the main channel where there were already expectations of what our videos are like, and this is completely different. Uh, also, it, I kind of felt like I didn't want to 
be on the main channel myself because I was and continue to be pretty uncomfortable with it. So this second channel was a place where I could sort of practice. And the, he's, he's gotten better, right? I mean, he's loosened up pretty good. Yeah, so the question is, do you think it makes sense to keep this second channel for things like this and to put the podcast videos there? Or do you think they sh we should just put it all on the main channel and not divide things up and kind of keep the, the focus just on essential craftsmen? We're really torn, and we've got good advice from really smart people kind of pulling us different ways. Both but ways. If you have a strong opinion on, on that, I think we'd be interested in some kind of a tie break. Um, it's actually not a tie break. I guess your thoughts would be the most, the most relevant. Yeah, the most the, the, <laughs> the highest value comments <laughs> yeah. come from the people that are sitting through this stuff. For so sure. if you think we should just keep doing what we're doing, let us know. If you think we should just take these types of discussions or just picture the podcast that yeah. you've watched and put those on the main channel and just say, tough everybody, it's our channel, and it's our content, and we're not going to complicate our life any more than necessary. So let, let us know if you have any thoughts there. And, um, and thanks, like always, for chiming in. Let's hit a couple more questions, and then we can wrap up if you've got yeah. any thoughts. Um, Octavius, in forging a pair of tongs, should I punch the rivet hole or drill it with a hand drill? You should drill the first set and punch all the rest. There you go. Okay, it, it, it takes... It takes it, you have to be able to evaluate that subjective center in the boss, right? And it's just a hard thing to get right. But so if you, if you make some diagonal lines and you center punch and you drill the first one, when you walk up to the next set and punch him, you're going to have an idea what you're shooting for. Yeah. All right. Um, single. Yeah. Okay. It'll be interesting what people say. I see answers saying single channel and separate channel. So we'll count them up. Yeah. It's, uh, Maybe there is a tie no break. answer. Yeah, there is no tiebreaker. Here's a tiebreaker. His opinion has been serving us well so far, so we'll probably go with that. Okay, here's a good Vincent D. Hi, guys. I love your work. Do you like hunting and fishing? Oh. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't? So I used to love it. I used to love, love, love it, and then life got in the way, right? And it's kind of dropped off the edge of the table. But it's fun to watch Nate and Leo kind of get into that around the edges. And so, yeah, it's, it's a great way to spend part of your life. Yeah. All right, any last comments or anything to share before we uh, wind this up from you? Uh, l let me know. I, I, we can't tell if the pace on this, we, we, it's hard to judge the value between getting to a lot of questions or going further into the weeds on individual questions. Uh, our heart rate is always a little elevated when it's a live feed because we yeah. can't edit out the problems. And So let us know if the pace and the detail and, and the, the tone is useful to you. But that's, that's all I've got. Oh, Kevin Thomas, when will we see you in Jimmy DeResta's shop? I don't know, but I've met Jimmy DeResta, and i got to say he is one pleasant, squared-away, genius kind of guy. Yeah. I was talking to a blacksmith, Bob Bergman, today, who's going to be on this podcast pretty soon. Um, he's in Postville, Wisconsin. And we were just talking about Jimmy DeResta and, and the size of his design gift, coupled with the fact that he's a thoroughly qualified, hands-on guy. And it would be a pleasure to be in that big, beautiful new shop. I don't know. It's a long ways to New York, but yeah, good question. It'd be cool to have that kind of confidence to think, what should I make? And most people kind of frame that within, you know, lumber or metal yeah. or whatever they work with. And for him, it's kind of like literally anything. Anything. <laughs> Plastic or metal or fiberglass or wood or steel. Yeah. It's all anything. fair game. That's really um, pretty special. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that he's obviously... Uh, a trailblazer and kind of filming and making the videos fun to watch. We're lucky yeah. to have him. So, so I saw him at the last Good of the Land Festival down there. And for a big part of the day, he had a bandsaw set up and he was cutting out wooden swords for the eight and 10 and 12 and nine year old kids that were there at the thing, engaging with the people beautifully. I got, I, Jimmy addressed is all right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody. I think we'll wrap it up. I think we might try to cut this into a podcast. I'm not sure about that. I guess that's another question. You'd be amazed how many things like that we're trying to decide all the time and actually as i say it maybe not because uh i, I don't know actually yeah i don't know we'll just keep bumbling along <laughs> and if you'll is, hang with us we'll do something if you listen to the podcast and you see one roll up that says q a and you already watched this here just skip it and and don't <laughs> don't worry about it um and okay i'll just do one more question because i like the guy's username fluffy puff could you make a video with how to be productive for folks who don't have a largest selection of tools in the garage and shop yeah, maybe. I have to think about that. Yeah, I, I mean, def definitely we could do it because being productive is not all about having the tools. How That's about only this? a part of it. How about this? You give a man a shovel and a pile of gravel and it takes you about 30 seconds to tell if he's productive or not. Yeah. Boom. 
You either are productive with that shovel or you're not, and there's tricks. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, thanks again. We're going to sign off. Thanks for watching. We'll leave this video up on the second channel. And can't tell you all how much we appreciate your uh, comments and feedback and really for supporting. And it feels like cheering us on while we build this house. It's been yeah. pretty, um, it's been an undertaking. And it's it's just really nice to feel like we've got, um, you know, some some fans who are on board with it. So. Yep, sure is. Thanks for everything.